G'day guys. Um, okay, we've got the cheap and nasty counter here set up now with the uh, actual GPS module connected to it. The GPS module is connected to an outside antenna and uh, it's been programmed to output 13 megahertz when it's locked. The output is coming out of this coaxial cable into the counter where the internal reference would normally be. And um, connected to the counter here on the input I've got a 10 megahertz G, uh, GPS derived frequency standard as well. And that's outputting 10 megahertz into the counter as you can see. The zero, the, uh, the last zero there is not moving at all, it's just sitting there and it's been like that uh, for the last four hours. It hasn't blinked or nothing, it's just 100% stable on that last digit. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the GPS board. This particular board here is a uh, U-Blocks, made by a company called U-Blocks. It's a Neo 7, and uh, they're available from eBay for around about $15. If you're going to buy one, shop around, because I've seen them as much as $60, depending on where you're buying from and who's selling them. But uh, you shouldn't, yeah, I mean, I bought this one for $15. That's the going rate at the moment. So it's basically, it's a bargain. It comes with a uh, GPS antenna, pre-amplified one, which is this little sucker here very very short pigtail but uh, you know I mean I'm this particular room has got a metal roof above it so I have to use an external GPS antenna but if this was a normal tile roof I'd be able to use that GPS with this antenna indoors and it's still giving me the same result so you know when you plug that into there you end up with a very very compact little GPS system very very compact frequency standard all right, a little bit more information. The uh, board has got a red LED. That red LED just tells you that it's got power, 5 volts. Uh, by the way, on the uh, back of this counter, there's a little board here which comes out to a BNC on the back. As far as I can tell, it's just a uh, 13 meg output from the original time base. And there's a red wire going to that board. That red wire's got 5 volts. So if you wanted to put this GPS inside the counter you could just power it from that 5 volt line and this particular board you could just remove it I have no idea what the purpose of it is but as far as I can see it's just a, uh, a board that's plugged into the uh, the main board it gets a 13 megahertz from the reference it buffers it um, and then it just sends it out to a BNC on the back I have no idea what that's for the only thing I thought it could be used was maybe to plug a cable from the back to the front and then adjust the frequency till it reads 13, uh, 13 uh, megahertz. That's, that's the only thing I could think of. But anyway, needless to say, that board is totally useless. You can just remove it. Use the red wire for five volts. This output here, you could um, you could actually use it uh, with your uh, GPS board via a switch on the back if you wanted to have both the GPS board and the actual um, internal reference connected and you are able to switch between the two. Alright, um, the board itself can be programmed to output any frequency you want from 1 hertz to about 15 megahertz. In this case I've got it programmed to output 13 megahertz, which is what this frequency counter requires to produce a stable, uh, stable reading. Um, the little green LED there at the moment is uh, constantly on, the little green LED. Uh, normally when you first power it up um, and the GPS receiver hasn't received any satellite yet, satellites yet that little green LED is just turned off once it's received a few satellites and it starts uh, you know reading information from a few satellites that green LED will uh, start to flash at one pulse per second mind you can program that to be whatever you want but in my case I've actually just leave it at one pulse per second and once the GPS is, uh, board is fully locked to uh, four or more satellites and uh, it's got a good signal and it's able to produce a, an accurate 13 megahertz output that green LED will stop flashing, go solid. The uh, unit turns on 13 megahertz, comes out of it straight into the uh, into the counter, and you get your nice uh, stable reference. You uh, to program the GPS board. To program the GPS board, you need a software called a U Center or U Dash Center. I'll just show you. Made by U Blocks. Here's the um, the name of it up there. And um, just download that software from the net, install it, uh, connect the um, GPS board via one of these little UART boards. So you need to get yourself a UART board. They're only a couple of dollars on eBay. And um, 
that just connects to some pins on the back of the board. Run the software, program it to output whatever frequency you need, uh, up to 15 megahertz, and um, and you're away. Make sure it's all working. You can see some visible satellites on the screen, which I'm just going to show you now. Okay, I've just run the software. Um, now down here, you can see down here, connected on COM3, 9600 uh, 9, board. There's a satellite, the list of satellites that's been re currently received and the relative signal strengths and also the relative location of each satellite. You've got numerous windows here if you want to play around. I'm not really into playing around. You've got a uh, configuration screen here under view, configuration view, and uh, basic configuration places. Uh, you go down to time plus, time pulse 5. And that's where you set all your settings. Now, as you can see, I've currently got it set to one hertz. When you first turn it on, when it first um, connects the satellites, um, going down here, I've got once it's frequency locked, I've got it set to 13 megahertz. Uh, duty cycle, blah blah blah. You upload that to the GPS, and uh, that that will stay permanently stay in the GPS. So the GPS will always do what it's been instructed to do from that point onwards. The actual GPS board, um, as I said, will output any frequency you want from 1 hertz to 15 megahertz. Now, keep in mind that this is not a, you know, GPS discipline oscillator. It basically uses an NCO to generate the frequencies. If you were to connect the output of that up to a uh, spectrum analyzer or an oscilloscope, you'll find that the output's actually quite ugly looking, quite dirty. It's not the ideal output to... Uh, to use, for example, to reference lock uh, communications equipment or whatever. But uh, just a locker frequency counter like this, a cheap frequency counter, uh, perfect, not a problem at all. It works great. As you can see, there's, there's absolutely no drama. Very, very cheap, very easy to implement. I've got a, um, a proper um, discipline oscillator up there, and I've got a Another one down here as well, which is the one that's actually generating the 10 meg signal that the uh, counter is currently reading. Um, yeah, but you know, for the money, for $15, you're not going to be able to beat this thing here. And if you just want to use it in stuff like frequency counters and stuff like that, it's very accurate and it works fine. There's no problem. There's no reason at all why you can't use that in a frequency counter. To actually get the unit to output frequencies fairly simple, you have to do a simple mod. Basically, um, where that little green LED is, uh, that LED actually flashes at the actual operating at the output frequency. So at the moment, that LED is flashing at uh, 15 million times per second. Obviously, you can't see it because it's uh, it looks like it's on all the time. So basically, you just uh, there's just a, a connection going from one side of that LED or a resistor associated with LED uh, to this little round uh, ring here which is isolated from the rest of the board and then there that's your that becomes your output port your frequency output port and that's uh, basically why I got that coaxial cable connected to it and going down into the counter so you just do that simple mod um, connect it up to your software connect up to your UART sorry run your software program it to whatever output frequency you want in my case it was 13 you might want 12 or you might want 15 or you might want 5 depending on whatever um, built-in reference your, your, your counter has. You could set it to 10 which is a standard for most uh, you know proper test equipment and um, put it in a little box. Now with this particular in this particular counter here I haven't decided whether I'm going to you know put it in the counter permanently or uh, put a little put another BNC on the back and loop the, um, the output of the internal reference to the BNC on the back which I can then loop back into the counter if I just want to use the internal reference or connect the GPS to it if I want to use the GPS reference. Um, so I haven't really decided which way I'm going to go. These, I mean, these boards are cheap enough. You can actually put one inside each test bit of test equipment if you really wanted to. Although, um, you know, ideally if you're going to plug into four or five things at once, you're probably best off, uh, you know, building a small buffer amplifier and connecting it to the output and then have your know, four or five outputs and then you know be able to connect it into your different bits of test equipment if everything's using say like 10 megahertz as a reference this counter 
this particular counter yeah, needs 13 megahertz, so um, that's why it's been programmed to 13 megahertz. And so I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to build it in or just leave it out or whatever. If you were to build this thing in, it'd probably be a good idea to run a couple of wires off that green LED to somewhere on the front panel there, an LED, so you can see the status of what's going on. Um, as is, as it's connected at the moment, if this uh, GPS board was to lose satellite signal, the uh, counter will just basically, all those digits will just go off. And for all intents and purposes, the counter looks like it's turned off. Um, I guess that's because this counter was built around that internal 13 meg reference, and uh, once that's gone, nothing on the counter works. It just looks like it's, as I say, it, it pretty much looks like it's turned off. I can show you that by just unplugging the uh, the UART from the computer. I'll unplug that now. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's just dropped out to one one zero. GPS board is off. Um, at the moment it dropped to one zero. Sometimes it drops to nothing at all, and then other times it's just yeah, random random digit or whatever. Just plug that UART mm -hmm. back in again. And now just waiting on the GPS board. It's just locked in. There we go. It's locked up, locked up again. So, if you build it in, in place of the original uh, oscillator, if you build the actual GPS board into the counter in place of the uh, regular oscillator and just have a uh, SMA antenna socket on the back for your GPS antenna, um, you, you could just do that and, and you know, just leave it, leave it permanently on when you need to use it. You might have to wait you know, a few minutes when you first power it up after a long period of not using it while the GPS gets its satellites and, uh, and locks on, but uh, not really a big deal. The good thing about it is that until it's actually locked, your counter won't even work at all, so you know that it's not locked. Um, I've mounted the GPS board inside the actual counter. There's a, uh, a post here, which you can probably just see under there. Uh, conveniently located um, exactly where you want it to install this uh, GPS board. So that worked out all right. You got your five volts from the counter going to the um, to that pin there, the VCC pin. I took the uh, five volts from this particular little board here. Now, when I first bought this counter, I'll show you the back. When I first bought this counter, I, I noticed this uh, BNC on the back, and I thought, wow, it's probably got a uh, um, an input for a reference, an external reference, but uh, upon investigating a little bit further, I found that there was not an input for an external reference, and uh, all that it appears to be is there's a uh, there's the uh, original uh, temperature control oscillator from the counter. It just basically takes a 13 megahertz from that counter, and uh, that goes to the counter, and then it also goes down this cable here onto this board. And this IC here, I haven't actually looked it up, but it's probably some sort of a buffer or something. So it just uh, amplifies the signal. And it comes out on the back of this BNC. Now, why they did that, I don't know. Um, I have no idea why they decided to take the, the, uh, that frequency out to the back. Uh, maybe for alignment purposes, maybe you can you know, connect a, a BNC cable here, connect it to the front of the counter. Uh, there and uh, you can determine you know, maybe adjust the uh, the oscillator till it reads 13 on the display I don't know either way this board is totally useless I you know you could just if you really want to you could just remove it it's, it does absolutely nothing in there but yeah conveniently there's a 5 volt wire on that board which I cut off from here and I've used that to uh, power the GPS board um, there's a tiny little connector here I don't know exactly what these are called, I'd have to look it up. And then, turn the lower F connector there, and a thin cable that goes to uh, SMA. And there's the SMA on the back of the counter now, so that's where I would hook up my GPS antenna to. Whether it's an outside one, if you've got a metal roof like I have, or if you've got a tile roof, you could literally just connect a small little magnetic stick on once to the top of the case, you know, up here somewhere, and it would work fine. The GPS itself has got plenty of sensitivity. It just doesn't work in this room. This room's got a metal roof over it. So any GPS related stuff in this room has to have an outside antenna. But yeah, basically that's it. So uh, 
it's all modified and converted nice and easy um, I've decided to um, maybe leave that in there permanently as a permanent fixture and um, that's it I'll just buy a couple more of these and uh, if I've got any other equipment that could use something like this I'll uh, program them to suit and install them so there you go nice simple project um, you know turns your uh, sort of cheapish nasty counter into something uh, quite a bit more useful anyway thanks for viewing don't forget to subscribe um, I intend to do a few more of these kind of videos in the future um, I don't always have time to do a video you know, often enough I'm repairing something I don't have time to stop and uh, you know make a video unfortunately it just uh, takes up too much time and too much effort but with uh, kind of simple sort of projects like this it's not so bad and even this one as you can see a lot of the stuff just in basically I've done it just taken photos because I didn't have time to uh, stop and take video but anyway if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and uh, I'll just keep uh, making a few every now and then various uh, subjects and things that I'm interested in all right Catch you next time.